Good morning. morning. So good to see everybody this morning. Hope everyone is doing well. Glad to see each one of you today, especially those that have not been able to be with us for a while and glad that you are feeling better and able to be back with us today. And to our visitors, we welcome you. We invite you to come back and worship with us any time that you have the opportunity to do so. Please know that you are our honored guests here today. You know, there are many events in history that we can remember in vivid detail. We remember where we were. We remember what we were doing the minute that we heard the news. For those of you who are older, it may be the day that you heard that Pearl Harbor had been bombed by Japan. Or it may be the day when you watched the newscast of man walking on the moon for the first time. Or it may be when President Kennedy was killed. Or when the Challenger space shuttle exploded. For those of us who are a little bit younger, we remember days like when the Columbia space shuttle disintegrated on re-entry. And especially, we remember 9-11. On 9-11, I was a junior in high school at Sloan Hendricks, and we had gathered that morning in the student center, and we were having a presentation about our senior year. You know, it was an exciting time, and they were talking to us about all the events that were going to take place and showing us all of the different mementos and other paraphernalia that you could purchase that go along with your senior year in high school. But suddenly Mitch Walton came into the room. Uh, Mitch was our high school principal. He came into the room and he stopped the meeting and he announced to us that the first tower had been hit. And he went on to tell us, he said, I don't know what all is going to happen today. He said, but I think you all need to go back to your classes. And for the rest of that day, we sat glued to the television screen. We couldn't believe what we were seeing. We remember other significant days as well. We remember the day that we got married. We remember the days that our children were born. And especially those of us who are children of God. We remember the day that we were baptized into Christ. I was baptized on June the 4th, 2000 in the 11 Point River at Birdale, Arkansas. By brother Danny Wells. I had gone forward during the invitation that morning, sat down next to brother Danny, told him what I wanted. He said, well, Josh, we have a problem. He said, the baptistry's broken. I said, I don't see that as a problem. And so the whole congregation loaded up. We went to the Babe Newsom farm. And my brother and I were both baptized into Christ on that day. But we remember the day of our second birth because that is a day that from that point on our life is forever changed. Our life will never be the same from that point forward. And indeed there are some days that stand out to us because of their significance, because of the dramatic and long-lasting effect that those days have upon us. In our lesson text this morning, Brother Ed shared with us just a moment ago, we read of such a day in the life of Simon Peter. Notice with me again Luke chapter 5. Let's begin by looking at the first seven verses. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. And he saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them, And they were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we've toiled all the night, and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. 
And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fish, and their nets brake. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both of the ships, so that they began to sink. Simon was just a common fisherman, going about his day-to-day business there at the lake. Typically, these fishermen, they would spend all night out on the lake, casting out their nets, dragging them back in in the hopes that they might catch something, something that they could use to feed their family or to sell in order to provide for the needs of their family. But as the text tells us, this night had been a complete failure. Well, this shows me that Peter was a more diligent fisherman than I am because if I go out for an hour and don't get a bite, I'm going to the house. But as the little song says, they had fished all night and caught no fishes. And there they were, they were on the shore of the lake, washing their nets, mending their nets, getting ready for the next night because this was something that they would do each day. They would spend all night, and then as the dawn would arise, they would go to the lake shore and began preparing for the next evening. Folks, to say that Simon was tired would be an understatement. But probably there was also some frustration with Simon because he had spent all night and had caught nothing. But into this normal everyday activity came a preacher. Jesus shows up, he gets into Simon's boat, and he began to speak to the people, this assembled mass that were there that were pressing upon him so much that he needed to get out from the crowd where he could speak. And he gets into the boat, and they get out into the water just a short way from the shore, and he begins to speak. Now, Simon, he could have argued that he was too busy or that he was too tired or that he had things that he had to do to get ready for that next night's fishing. But instead, we find that he was polite and accommodating. He came to the assistance of Jesus, and this was no small task. Because everything that I just said about Simon would have been true. Yes, he was tired. Yes, he had things that he had to do. He was busy mending and folding his nets, getting them ready. Probably hoping that he would have a little bit of time to rest before having to go back out on the water again. But then this preacher comes along. And he asks Peter to take him out on the boat. But we find that this was not the first time that Simon Peter had met Jesus. For we read in John chapter 1 verses 40 through 42 that one of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother Simon and said unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus, and when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. So Jesus was not a stranger to Simon. Simon knew a little bit about who Jesus was and what he was involved in. Perhaps Simon thought, well, this is just a small contribution that I could make to Jesus' ministry. But in spite of being tired, in spite of his workload, in spite of his desire to rest, Simon graciously went along with the request that Jesus made. Now certainly we could look at this and we could say, you know, Simon, he could have been rude. He could have let his frustration be shown. He could have been selfish with his time. 
He could have looked at Jesus and said, you're not using my boat, you can find another. But on this day, we see that Simon was courteous. He was polite and he was helpful. And as a result of this, after this day, his life would never be the same. His life would be changed forever. We never need to underestimate the power of common courtesy. Our world today is filled with rage. It's filled with a sense of self-importance. And it seems that so many in the world around us have lost this trait of genuine kindness and goodness toward our fellow man. Instead, it seems that all we focus upon, upon our personal rights and our personal privileges. But Simon wasn't like that. Yes, he was tired. Yes, he was busy. But he took the time to be accommodating. He took the time to be polite and to be gracious to Jesus. Now it may be that him having a prior knowledge of Jesus, this may have been motivation enough for him to act in this way. But we find that after hearing the sermon that Jesus presented on that day, and then witnessing the miracle that was about to take place with this miraculous catch of fish, we find that if there was any doubt in Simon's mind as to who Jesus was prior to this day, that after this, that was gone forever. He knew who Jesus was, and he would never turn back from serving him. But so often in our life today, we're busy. We're tired. We have so many things that we try to fit into our schedule that it seems like if we try to do one more thing that it'd be just too much. But let us take time to be kind, to be polite. To offer a smile, offer a kind word to those that we come into contact with. Assist those that we have the ability to assist. Because we never know when we might meet someone that has a powerful impact upon our life. Looking back to our lesson text, let's pick up in verse 8 and let's notice a few more verses. Luke chapter 5, beginning in verse 8, when Simon Peter saw it, so this is talking about after the fish have been caught, after they've loaded so many into both boats that the boats are starting to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' feet, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished in all that were with him at the draught of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto him, Simon, fear not, for henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. Now folks, this miracle was truly amazing. After all, according to the superstitions of the day among mariners, you weren't supposed to be able to catch fish in the daytime. But yet, here it was, in the morning, probably bright sunshine, they're out here on the sea, and they've caught more fish than they've ever caught on a night in their life. That's not supposed to happen. But not only that, this was not a fisherman who told them where to cast their nets. This was a carpenter. What does he know about fishing anyway? But Simon Peter was so impressed with what he had heard and what he had seen in Jesus that he was now completely sold on the fact that Jesus is the Messiah. That he is the Son of God. And he's not just some preacher. He's not just some common man. But there's something special there. There's something unique about Jesus. Simon saw 
that Jesus had insight that mere men did not have. Not only did he have insight into physical things such as where to cast the net, but we see that he was also able to see beneath the surface of men. He was able to see what was in the heart. He was able to see the potential that was there. Now Simon would come to get to know Jesus much better over the next three years. But his eyes were already open to the fact that there was something unique about Jesus. That Jesus was special. He knew that he was in the presence of someone extraordinary. But this day would change Simon's life. Because as this passage tells us, no longer would he be going out at night, spending all night on the boat fishing. No longer would he spend his mornings mending nets and folding them and restocking the ship and getting ready for the next night. But instead, he was now going to go forth in the footsteps of Jesus. He was going to be going forth seeking to save that which was lost. And Simon had no idea that when dawn came on that day, that by the end of that day, he would no longer be a fisherman, he would be a preacher. He would no longer be a fisher of fish, but he would now be a fisher of of men. But what caused this? What led to this dramatic change in the life of this man? Simon met Jesus. When Simon saw who Jesus was, he could not turn away. He couldn't overlook what he had learned and what he had witnessed and just go back to his old way of life. Everything changed the day Simon met Jesus. But this is also what happens when any sinner meets Jesus. That sinner cannot go away unchanged. Because that sinner is going to have to make a decision. Either he is going to reject the Lord or he is going to accept the Lord. Now in rejecting Jesus, he's still going to know that he's turning away from something special. We think about all of those who witnessed the miracles that Jesus performed who would not place their faith in him. But yet they could not deny that something miraculous had happened. They could not deny that Jesus was someone special. Even many of those in the world around us today who do not claim that Jesus is the Son of God, they still see Him as a good man, as someone who was special, someone who was unique. Folks, when we meet Jesus, we can't help but be changed in some way. But then on the other hand, in accepting Jesus, we find that the sinner comes to change his entire life. I think Paul put it best in Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 3, when he said, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Paul said it very well. He says that once you have accepted Jesus Christ through obedience to the gospel, he says you will change directions. No longer are you going to be living a life devoted to the things of this world. But you're going to set your sights on things above. Your thoughts, your actions, your desires are all going to be dictated based upon your faith. This is what happened to a fisherman named Simon. And it's what happens to every sinner that comes to Jesus. 
their life has changed. And when we realize who Jesus is, even if our understanding of Him is one that is new, is one that is limited, one that is immature, we can't remain unchanged. Because Jesus will change us. But let's go back to Simon for just a moment. Simon had worked all night and had produced nothing for his efforts. Fished all night, caught no fishes. But now he was blessed with more fish than his boats could even hold. But something that is amazing to me that we read in this text To Simon, these fish became almost an afterthought. Because it said that once they came to the shore, notice it says that he forsook all. Now you think with me for just a moment, what a great financial blessing that would have been to his family and to his partners and to their families. These ships filled with fish Not only would it provide for the nourishment for their family, but being able to sell that and and to have that, that security. But yet Simon wasn't able to enjoy that. Because to him, after he met Jesus, that was not was what that was not what was important to him. After he met Jesus, he didn't care about the things of this world. Oh, that morning, I'm sure he did. I'm sure he was frustrated. I'm sure he was probably grumbling because a whole night wasted. But then when his ships were filled, it was no big deal. Because that was not what was important to him. Because in the presence of Jesus... Simon focused upon his weakness. He focused upon his sinfulness. He focused upon the fact that he was in the presence of the one that could change his life. He fell down at Jesus' feet in awe of this man. In awe of what he had seen. Because in the words of Christ and in the miracle that he had just witnessed, it caused him to recognize his weakness and his sinfulness. When a sinner comes to realize who Jesus is, shame and guilt should follow. Whenever we think about like Brother David shared with us in our thought before the Lord's Supper this morning about what Jesus went through for us. The sacrifice that He made so that our sins could be taken away. That should be a humbling realization. And the shame and the guilt that we feel that we have those sins in our life that are binding upon us that have not been taken away. When we come to know who Jesus is and we realize that we cannot stand justified by, or in the presence of God standing before His throne on just our merits alone. That without Jesus we are nothing. Like Simon Peter, it should cause us to fall down in awe at the feet of Jesus. To come to Him in humble submission. And allow Him to be our Savior. Like those thousands on the day of Pentecost. Who had assembled there when this very same Simon Peter. Stood up and proclaimed that first gospel sermon. When he introduced them to Jesus Christ. The one that they had crucified. Just like those on Pentecost, when we come to realize who Jesus is and what He wants to do for us, it should prick us to the heart. 
it should lead us to crying out, what shall we do? What shall we do? How can I make my life right? Simon didn't reject Jesus. He didn't run away from Jesus. Instead, he accepted and faced his own sinfulness. He realized that his life needed to be changed and he was drawn to Jesus. He forgot about the fish. He forgot about all of the things that he had been worrying about just hours before. Because he was drawn to Jesus. After seeing this miracle, Simon realized that he needed forgiveness. He realized that he was a sinner and that Jesus was the one that could bring about that salvation. Folks, there's a drawing power to Jesus. He said in John 12 and verse 32, he says, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. It's a fact that Jesus came to this earth to condemn sin. That He came to redeem the sinner. As a result, when we meet Jesus, when we come to an understanding of who He is and what He wants to be in our life, when we face the guilt and the shame that come from a realization that we are in sin, we realize that we can still come to Christ. That He is still our Savior. That He came to earth with a purpose. Folks, it wasn't just a purpose in the first century. It wasn't just to prepare them for the coming of the kingdom. Jesus came to this earth to seek and to save that which was lost, and that includes you and me. Just as Jesus was a Savior in the first century, Jesus is our Savior today. And that knowledge should draw us to Him when we realize what He's done for us and what He still wants to do in our life. It should draw us to Him. I'm sure Simon never imagined that he would leave the fishing boat. I'm sure that he felt that his entire life would be devoted to that career. I'm sure he never felt that he was going to devote the remainder of his life to preaching. I can only imagine the conversation that took place when he went back and he told his family and his friends what he was doing. But as Simon faced himself he learned that Jesus saw in him a potential that he did not see. And while he would have been perfectly satisfied to remain on the boat, devoting his life to fishing, Jesus saw in him a leader. He saw in him a preacher, a teacher, and a man that would eventually become an apostle. In facing his sin, Simon was drawn to a Savior who saw unlimited potential in him. But this same Jesus sees the same in you and I. He sees unlimited potential within each and every one of us. Because you see, God has placed just beneath the surface within each and every one of us a certain potential. We all have things that we can do to help serve the cause of Christ. And by meeting Jesus, by submitting to His will and becoming a faithful child of God, we can unleash that potential. But it may be that up to this day, we've squandered our potential. It may be that up to this day, that we've kept that potential beneath the surface because all we focus upon is the sin that's in our life. 
Or if we are a child of God, we've held ourselves back because we think about maybe what we were like before we became a Christian. We think about the sins that we were engaged in before. And we think, you know, I'm not worthy to be of service to God. But Christ sees a potential in each of us. But we have to allow that to be unleashed. Remember, Simon started out as a fisherman. Spending his nights out on the lake, casting those nets. Not a man of great influence, not a man of great education. But Jesus saw in him the potential to become the Apostle Peter. He saw in him the potential to one day lead more than 3,000 souls to Christ in one day. This same Simon. Tradition tells us eventually became a very strong leader in the church at Jerusalem, later at Rome, and eventually lost his life at the hands of the Romans because of his faith. But it all began on the day he met Jesus. A day that he would never forget. But the question that we must ask ourselves today is this. Have you come to know Jesus? Do you know who he is? Do you realize that he can and that he will completely change your life for the better? Will you listen to him? Will you follow him? If you will, then he will change you. Have you faced your shortcomings and your sins? Have you come to a realization that without Jesus, that you're lost? That you're without hope? Have you realized the potential that God has put inside of you? Don't sell yourself short. Don't keep that potential inside because you continue to live a life devoted to sin. Folks, just as Simon experienced a day that he would never forget, today can be that day for you. As Ananias said to Saul, And now, why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling upon the name of the Lord. If you are not a Christian today, then don't delay any longer. If you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, then realize that you are a sinner. That you are in need of a Savior and make the decision today that you're going to turn away from your sins and you're going to turn to Christ. That's called repentance. Come forward. Confess that faith that you have in Christ and allow you to redeem Him through His blood. Come into contact with that blood in the waters of baptism. And as you seek to follow Jesus, He will change your life. He will transform you. But ask yourself this question. Do you know Jesus? If you do not know Him, or if you've turned away from Him. Maybe you once were faithfully serving Him, but you've turned away and gone back out into the world. Then we encourage you to make your life right. We encourage you today that if you have a spiritual need in your life, that if we can help you today in coming to know Jesus, making this a day that you will never forget, a day that you will make the most important decision of your life, then we encourage you to come forward and make that known at this time while together we stand and sing.